Hello, everyone. Welcome to the migrating from Cori to Promoter training today. This training is for helping users. Um, you're starting to working on migrating from your Cori application to Promoter. And if for a new user joining uh, this allocation year, try to work on Promoter. My name is Helen He. I am with the NERSC User Engagement Group. Uh, I'd like to start with some logistics first. Um, please change your name in Zoom as first name, last name, and NERSC username. Uh, you could do this by click participants and then more uh, next to your name to rename. We have enabled the closed caption and full transcript so you can toggle on and off and you could even save a uh, transcript if you would like to. We will upload slides after each talk and videos should be available in a few days uh, after we do some processing. Uh, they'll be available next week. For this training, we're doing um, Q and A's in Google Doc. It is much preferred over Zoom chat, things that are interleaved and also recorded. Uh, here's the link. We have um, lots of nurse staff standing by to answer questions for you. Uh, we do prefer that uh, talks are not interrupted, but then we may have some time um, to do, if you have unmute to ask questions, or you could continue ask questions in the Google Doc. We also have a, a section after all the talks just for Q and A's. Um, we hope you could help us with a survey afterwards. We'll remind you at uh, the break and after the training as well. So about this training, first of all, this is a rerun of the December 1st uh, migrating training with some minor updates. So if you missed this, this is a good training for you now or for new users, because uh, we have lots of new users joined the new allocation year, um, January 18th. This training, I'd just like to mention what it covers and what it doesn't, what it doesn't cover. It covers parameter architectures, recommended programming models, some programming tips, and uh, available programming environment. Especially, we will cover um, building and running jobs and CPUs and GPUs focus on differences between Cori and Parameter. However, it does not cover teaching you coding and optimization of using CPU and GPU programming models, such as OpenMP Offload, OpenACC, CUDA, etc. It also does not cover detailed usage of data analytics software and workflow usages. Um, in some of the end of, of the talk, we I have um, added some provide some information of uh, documentations and trainings, especially for data analytics software as well. Here's a brief agenda. Uh, I'm doing this quick introduction talk right now. Then Jack the Slip will cover introduction to Promoter architecture, recommended programming models, intro to GPU, and some science, exciting science stories from our um, users, uh, how our nurse staff working with vendors to prepare for this um, programming environment, especially on GPUs with tools and optimizations. Then Eric Palmer and Moaz Awaz Awan are uh, going to talk about is particularly migrating from Cori to Parameter on CPU and migrating from Cori to Parameter on GPU. GPU is brand new, of course. Then, as I said, we have Q&A and we'll do hands-on. Uh, we have prepared exercises for CPU and GPU you can use or you can bring your own exercises or own codes that we, we can help you to migrate if you need any help. Um, <clears throat> hands on exercise, this is a GitHub um, location. Uh, mm -hmm. We do have reservations today for three hours and we add, added everybody, uh, nurse users to the Ntrain 8 project so that you can use the uh, reserved nodes. Some timeline of Cori. Cori will be retired as we have announced in end of April, 2023. It has been installed for over, have been here for over six years installed in 2015. It could be the large, longest lasting system at NERSC. Uh, we do allocate for AY 2023, all based on parameters capability. So your hours allocated for parameter can be used on Cori on CPU. You have CPU allocation hours and GPU allocation hours. So the CPU hours can be used on Cori. We give users time and help tra to transition. We started transition um, with like office hours and 
in November. We also have published a transition webpage. So give, we were offering more office hours um, in March and April. Uh, we'll be retired end of uh, 2023, as I mentioned, uh, we use T in the next slide. It's uh, the, the purpose of retiring Corey is because we want to save power usage. We want to give um, space for the next system. We also, because of the much, many, much of the, many of the parts on Corey is like old and um, the, the vendors, producers are not producing them anymore. So it's, it's gonna be hard if we have so anything goes bad, we won't be able to you know, replace or repair those. These are all uh, some of the considerations for retiring Corey. Timeline, we have started software freeze in October, 2022. So no more new user facing software is to be installed at, on Corey. Um, we had office hours transitioning focus starting November. Uh, let's use T here. So um, uh, everything bigger system, big parts, household nodes, um, k nodes are to be retired at end of April. However, there are two parts actually retires early, which will be at end of March. Corey GPU nodes will retire end of March and Corey large memory nodes as well um, retire end of March. And it, the large memory nodes is being planned to be moved to poor murder at some point of time. Um, we don't have a timeline for that, but it'll all be moved to poor murder. And then T minus one, we will have an, an reservation made so that new jobs starting from there were not running through T. So every job will finish by T. And at T time, we will delete all the jobs still in queue. So, and no new jobs can be submitted. No new jobs will be run, of course. And we'll, <clears throat> And we still allow you logging for another week. And you can, during that week, you can retrieve your files from Corey Scratch. Um, on the files on all the other file system um, are still available on Parameter or other nurse systems. So you don't have to do anything special for them. But Corey Scratch data, you have a one week to retrieve. And then T plus one week, um, all the logging nodes will be closed permanently and followed by disassemble of the system. How to access Parameter? You can SSH um, Parameter-P1 or SAW-P1. SAW is the first name of SAW Parameter that our system is named after the scientist at Berkeley Lab who has uh, won Nobel Prize. And you still use MFA, which is multi-factor authentication, which is password plus one-time password in the same way as you do on Cori. We do recommend you use SSH proxy to reduce the frequency of authentication. And the default time is 24 hours. So you don't have to type your password or MFA um, again and again within 24 hours. There's another way access parameter or query. Uh, lots of users prefer to use Jupyter Hub. So you can access exclusive CPU node, exclusive GPU node, or shared CPU node via uh, Jupyter Hub. The configurable GPU option is for you to use um, node reservations such as today. Um, there is a like terminal kernel. There are JupyterHub has uh, some other kernels such as Python, PyTorch, et cetera. There's also a terminal kernel that you can choose and you get a terminal within the JupyterHub that you can do um, uh, file access, editing, uh, compilation, et cetera. Um, I'd like to also mention the file system data considerations. As I mentioned earlier, that your data on Cori in your global home or uh, community file system directories are available on Parameter. So you, you don't need to do anything special for them. Um, for, however, um, there's one special thing to, you do. Um, we do we have a, a sim link uh, called Global Project Projectors that you've been using on Cori. And we, we had a system. Um, file system upgrade to community file system. So the new file system is already CFS and that global project is actually a sim link to CFS on Cori. And we will not be um, migrating the sim link to Parameter. So on Parameter, you should use the direct link of CFS. Um, 
So be sure to remove this from old scripts. If you're moving over from query to parameter and use the direct CFS directory, which is um, global CFS slash seeders. BIOS um, query scratch is not available, not accessible on parameter. Parameter has its own scratch file system and query scratch data will be retired with query. So be sure to migrate scratch data um, there's ways, uh, we have a, a link here, um, how do you move your data to um, CFS or to HPSS? Or if you want to move to parameter, there's actually two step. You need a globus uh, endpoint from query scratch to uh, DTN to CFS on data transfer node. And then from data transfer node, use another globus step, um, migrate onto uh, parameter but details um, in this link. Now I'm gonna touch upon some of the similarities and differences between Cori and Parameter comparison. Both of them use the familiar Cray user environment with uh, compiler wrappers, uh, little CC, capital CC, FTN for C, C++ and Fortran codes compilation. You also see PRGENV modules. Uh, you would use module swap or module load another PRGENV to get onto another environment um, for like such as um, <clears throat> GNU environment, um, Cray environment, etc. We also still use Slurm for uh, batch uh, scheduling, and you will see similar uh, QoS regular premium overrun shared, etc. You will see similar CPU nodes, kind of um, standard CPU architecture. No major surprises there, except it's AMD processor CPU instead of um, Intel CPU. And for clock speed wise, this parameter CPU nodes have similar clock speed as in Haswell. And it also has um, similar number of cores per node as in KNL on, on Cori. What are the differences? Um, when I when I mentioned uh, you can module load something PRGNV, there's little difference here. We do use uh, LMOD on parameter versus Tickle module on on Cori, and many similarities. You can do module load, module um, avail, module swap, uh, module display. But the major differences, the biggest difference is that. Modules may not modules may not be initially available visible, like when you do module avail, you don't see all the uh, available modules. You need to use module spider to find hidden modules that are um, has have some uh, hierarchy dependencies. You'll hear more about this in um, Eric's talk uh, today. Uh, obviously, GPU nodes are brand new. Um, many of users need to uh, work on migrating and using um, specific uh, programming models that are ex um, for uh, exploit GPU nodes. Some of the users have all the considerations of portability, performance on GPU compatible. You have um, different versions of GPU code. You may have CPU only versions. So exploring the GPU nodes is a, a bigger uh, topic and, and that for, for using parameter. Um, compiler programming environment versions, we there's no Intel compiler. Uh, NERSC is exploring it, so it may be available sometime in the future, but not now. Um, Cori has the Intel compiler as default, so there are some usages of you know libraries you have used. We do have some uh, recommendations in Eric's talk as well. Then um, we do have a new um, NVIDIA compiler that um, has the best CPU and GPU support um, on parameter. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, this training is not covering the GPU uh, data analytics document, data analytics parts of the usage, but here's uh, some of the great links on our documentations on Jupyter, Python, uh, Julia, Shifter, workflow tools, and machine learning, etc. I also want to point out um, lots of trainings here. This train, these set of trainings covers uh, using CPU and GPU, um, traditional simulation, GPU programming models, 
and lots of data analytics topics as well. So the, the lists with plus sign are ha, has have the uh, data analytics data related topics that we want to explore more. All the trainings here uh, have slides and recordings available. Um, the big <clears throat> pink link has the complete list. Um, you can explore more um, trainings on this web page as well, not only just these um, listed here. We had um, new user training, using promoter training, GPUs for science, data day, AI for science, OpenMP offload, CUDA training, SQL training, um, <clears throat> and using NVIDIA compiler. So all sorts of trainings here. Um, this page lists uh, more information and further training opportunities. So we have uh, migrating from Cori to Promoter documentation covers uh, lots of topics that we covered for all the um, presentations today and more. And we are having more office hours. We have had 10 office hours since November, met with 150 plus users. We have two more scheduled in, in March. Uh, feel free to come and bring your own codes or just some, some users just um, stop by and listen to other people's questions and answers as well. Uh, we are having another um, training in April, early April. It's um, N ways for GPU programming bootcamp especially geared towards uh, new users, uh, new GPU users. So it'll introduce the uh, various programming models, OpenMP Offload, OpenACC, CUDA, Standard Language Parallelization, and with hands-on exercises uh, for each, each uh, programming model, plus a mini challenge. They'll be paired with a team of others um, to optimize the serial code, and, um, and there will be a winner. Then there's a um, uh, DOE cross, cross facility workflows training on data uh, workflows, GNU Parallel, Parcel, Fireworks, Barsum. Um, pay attention for the deadline or application deadline of all of these trainings as well. And we're also working on another Kodi training, which is Kodi is a developer tool to help you inserting OpenMP and OpenACC directives for CPU and for GPU. So, which is very handy tool. And that is all I have. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, welcome again. Excited for you to start using Perlmutter.